All right, guys, thank you uh, very much for coming. I know it's uh, appreciate you adjusting your schedule as we, uh, we've had to adjust our schedule a little bit this week with it uh, being fall break and our players being away. So uh, we've had a good couple days of practice. We have some guys back healthy and uh, excited to go play an outstanding Cincinnati team this week. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us to um, uh, highlight and showcase our seniors. You know, we're uh, very grateful for them. They've been through quite a bit, and uh, for them to uh, – have us in the position we're in right now, I think, is a credit to them and their versatility, their resiliency, and and uh, now we'll hopefully finish the way we can, the way we know we can. So, uh, Cincinnati comes in. Coach Tuberville has done a great job there. They've obviously been good for a very long time. Uh, veteran group, dynamic, dynamic offense, really, you know, tough, strong defense, and um, you know it'll be it'll be a challenge for us, but it'll be a good challenge, one we're excited about, and so uh, we're looking to play our best football here at the end. And, and uh, we'll need to do that to play them. So with that, I'll see if you guys have any questions. Um, I think we're going to have to, uh, number one, I think th th their, their success starts with their offensive line. So our defensive line is going to have to play extremely well. We're going to have to get pressure on, 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 they have two outstanding quarterbacks, Gunnar Keel and uh, Munchie Legault. They're, you know, they're just outstanding players. So we'll have to get pressure on them. And they have to stop the run game. And they do, a, you know, they ran for 258 yards, I think, against UConn. So they can also run the ball as well. So it'll start with our defensive line, and then we can't give up big plays. You know, we have to limit, limit them down the field. Yeah, Kenny was out at practice, but he didn't really practice today. So he'll be he'll still be a game time decision. You know, I know Kenny, I mean, he'll find a way to get out there. It'll just be what can he do? You know, how can he help us? And the biggest thing he can help us is, in, you know, on third down, um, you know, he's converted a lot of third down and, and shorts running the football, and he's he's helped us um, uh, in pass protection. So hopefully he'll be able to do at least those two things. Yeah, I thought the week off was outstanding. I mean, just in a lot of ways, you know. I mean, I think as we came back and watched that Penn State film, um, you know, it felt it felt different than it probably really was. I mean, it was a seven-point game in the fourth quarter, you know. And so, um, you know, you basically have what amounts to two pick sixes. You have drops. You have penalties. You know, just not not a just a really disappointing day on offense. But defensively, you know, they weren't happy with the way they played, and and they're they're a little bit further along mentally now defensively. Um, I think because what they went through last year and they were they kind of hung in there, so they they weren't happy about the fact that they gave up those yards rushing to Penn State, and um, so I think that, that they just kind of needed that week to to regroup. You know, we have Shabazz back out there practicing the O lines back together, which is which is as big as anything else we could have happen to us, and I think that they're ready to go compete in those last two games. You know, I mean, they you know they have a chance to have us be bowl eligible, which you know which I think's important, and. Um, you know, I, I just I sense a, a positive team out there today. Yeah, well, I'll I'll say very bluntly, PJ hasn't played good enough. That that's that's number one. Number two, no one's made a play for PJ, right? I mean, like, you know, Eli Manning had five picks last week. All of a sudden, he throws the ball to Odell Beckham. He jumps up, catches it behind his head, and. Everything's off and running. I mean, you, you can't find a time where we've thrown a ball up since about Houston where someone's just – forget about just jumping up and making a play, but, like, you know, catching a curl route. I mean, that first first down, I mean, you know, he throws a curl route and the guy's not there. So so he's not getting much help right now, and he's under duress. He's getting hit. And you can't play quarterback when you're getting hit. So, um, you know, there's just all those things at work right now. There's not, not anyone really making a play. Um, we're not really protecting him, not running the football. And – and you know he's just not playing good enough, so uh, he he recognizes that. The one, just tell him the truth. I mean, I you know you, you know look, you know, didn't play good enough here. Here here's the one thing that's happening to him, is he's just he's just competing at every turn. You know what I mean? All, too much at times, right? He's trying to do too much, but I don't see a guy that's backing away from the challenge. I don't see a guy that looks shell shocked. I see a guy that's. You know, he made a couple runs uh, in that Penn State game where we didn't block for him or the back went the wrong way. I mean, we had the ball in the 20-yard line. The running back goes the wrong way. He's supposed to throw the ball to the back in the flat. He makes two guys miss and runs and gets us to, you know, second and four. So I see a guy that's just out there competing. And so I know the talent that he has. I know that, you know, the receivers and, and all those, you know, they'll, they'll start making some plays. What I want to see is when things are going hard, you know, what kind of guy are you? And he's competing at a high, high level. So. But that doesn't mitigate what all the other stuff I'm saying. I'm telling them, hey, this is good enough. This isn't good enough. That's that's my job. That's all of our jobs. So.
uh, you know, um, I think they know. I mean, they know that they have to make plays, and I think they've seen themselves make a couple plays here, you know, in the past. Um, so, you know, I think it's one of those things like you don't want to press too hard, right? You know, but I think everyone's pressing a little bit too hard right now. So, um, I, I get no sense that they're not trying. I get no sense that they're not out there competing. I just think that they just haven't made those plays yet. And so, you know, I came in at, in the locker room after the Memphis game. I said, you know, Memphis is going to win the league now, right? I mean, they're, they're you know, and we lost to them by a field goal. And, you know, we're a couple drops away from winning, you know, and a bad decision and a couple penalties away from, I mean, that, that doesn't even have to be a close game. I mean, we're going to chance to go up 17 nothing with a holding penalty. So I think just, you know, guys got to make one more play. I mean, then that's all it really is. We have to make a couple more plays. And, and the guys on this team have to do it. The guys we recruit will do it, you know, and it's just that, that's how you move forward. So I feel like our guys are trying really hard. I, got no, I have no complaints with those receivers. They're trying. They just – they'll catch the ball, and all of a sudden everything will kind of pick back up, I think. Yeah, and I'll tell you exactly. Here's what I did last night. I went in last night and I put on the 2012 signing class, which was Kenny and Jalen signing class. And there's, and there's still some guys, and I think of like the 18 guys, there's only like eight or nine that um, either finished their eligibility last year or will finish it this year or that are still on the team. And I showed the class before that, which is Roby and Connor Riley's class. I put on, and I really watched the highlights. It was like a stroll down memory lane. The guys are laughing at Kenny. He's all skinny and, you know, um, but I also, you also saw the kids that, that aren't here, you know, and that, that life took them in a different path. And my point to the team was this, man. It comes and it goes really quickly. And it doesn't really matter where you start. Like a credit to a Musso and some of those other guys that play a bunch for us, they weren't on there because they didn't sign. They walked on here. And my point to the young guys was it doesn't matter where you came from, who else offered you, how many offers you had, how many stars you had. None of that really matters. It matters where you end up and what you do. And um, for these guys, they, their path was to stay here and – and to live through different coaches and different assistant coaches. And I couldn't be more grateful to them, you know, and, and for some of them to play their best football in their senior year and to have us be on the on the brink of having a chance to go back to a bowl, which I think would be quite an accomplishment for Jalen and Kenny and Obi and Juan Emmy and, and, and Brett Pierce and, and Anthony Roby. So it was, I sp was speaking to the older guys, you know, the seniors, they thank you. I was speaking to the younger guys, the, the juniors, Saying, you know, don't don't you owe it to these guys to play your best football, and and don't show it. You know, I, I don't think there's ever been a, a, any class that's gone back to, to back to back bowl games. So, telling the juniors, you need to help these guys get to a bowl game, so then you can do it next year and be the first class that did it. And to the freshmen, don't be one of the guys that's not here. You know, what I mean, do the right things. Be just like Kenny. Be just like Jalen. And that's the message because we have a really talented freshman group, and they can learn a lot from the kids that we have that are graduating. Um, that's a that's a great question. You know, I think it was probably different on different different fronts. You know, I think um, I think the, at the end of the day, I think the one thing we were just just disappointed with at Penn State was we just weren't a real physical group, as physical as we could be. And even still, I mean, our defense played well, but not 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 to the standard that we're starting to set. Um, but I think the biggest message over over the bye week was just just to regroup and 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 come together over these last two weeks, healthy and and with energy, and and go play the, to the, you know to the best we can. Yeah, Ionitis, um, Ionitis is, uh, you know, almost an unsung hero. I mean, he's, he, he, I, there's a lot of good defensive linemen in this league. I don't know if anyone's better, though. I mean, he, uh, he plays the run and he plays the pass. You know, he, so he does it all. He plays 60, 70, 80 plays a game. I mean, he's out there all game. And he's been a, he's really been a dominant force for us at times in, in terms of helping us in the passing game, but also helping us in the run game. No one's developed more over the last year than he has. And then Matty Kevich the same way. I mean, you know, he's always been productive, but, his, you know, his leadership, his attention to detail, his demanding of accountability of his teammates. The reason why you see other guys playing at such a higher level now, I think, is because guys like Tyler and Matt, you know, they're not afraid to, 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 to hold a standard on defense. And you see, in Tavon Young, I mean, he's another guy. That, those guys that are juniors, about to be seniors, they have made a decision that there's going to be a standard set on our defense and they're going to meet it. And it starts with Matt and it starts with Tyler, and I'll throw Tavon in there as well.
Yeah, I mean, well, I think I think Gunnar Keel, their quarterback, they have a great system. I mean, people blitz him, he gets the ball out of his hand. They're not afraid to throw the ball down the field. I mean, they're throwing fades up and they're completing them. You know, I mean, they're they're, they're throwing screens up and catch them and running 50, 60 yards. So, but the the O line is really, really, really talented and and really well coached. And you know, so straight four man rush, they're 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 beating up three man rushes. You know, he's finding guys open. I mean, they've you know they're scored they're scoring against. Uh, Miami, they it was a 31-28 game, 20, game against Ohio State at one point. So that old line's you know, really, really talented. I, I think you know I haven't really I don't really pay too much attention, but I think he's fine. I, you know I, we we looked at the film, didn't see him really even get hit. I think they just you know Munchie Le, Lego. I mean he he's you know I'll say this he's he's what's right about college football to, to have that injury that he had last year. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It was as gruesome an injury as you'll ever see, and um, you know. Just kind of a really good kid, you know, having a chance to meet him. And he, he's come back. And when he's had to play or he's gotten a chance to play, he's played really good football for them. So uh, Gunner's extremely talented. But but Munchie, you know, he's he's a competitor. I'm sure the kids on the team rally around him after everything he's been through. That's it. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.